and welcome to Emerson Point Preserve. I'm Coral Bass with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources, and I'm excited to have you out today to learn about macroinvertebrates, an aquatic macroinvertebrate to be exact. Now, you're asking probably, what is a macroinvertebrate? Well, they're anything you can see with your naked eye. That's what macro means, right? Naked eye. And invertebrate means they don't have a backbone. Feel your backbone. Can you feel your backbone? Yeah, feel it right there. All right? They don't have that. They have typically a hard outside shell. Not always, though. Worms are macro invertebrates. All right, but we're doing aquatic ones. So we're going to be into the water and finding some of our juvenile species. Thanks. Now let's have fun. In order to collect macroinvertebrates, you're going to need to have some supplies. Not pictured here is a D-frame net. It doesn't have to be D-framed, but you'll need a net that has a flat side. It's easier to scrape the bottom on. Second, you're going to need something clear and plastic, something you can see through. Uh, it can be any size will do, just as long as you can see movement. Then you're going to want something flat, like a pie plate, or, as pictured here, a frisbee and a spoon for each member of the family or group that's working together. You're gonna to want an ice cube tray, make sure it's filled with water so you can put each individual macro in, and finally a bucket. That's how you're gonna haul all the macros, water, and any vegetation out of the water. Now choose a pond, river, or stream to explore, but make sure you follow all rules for the local area. While you're at the stream, make sure you pause for a moment and look for any dangers. Dangers could be any wild animals, like a snake or an alligator, maybe plant life, like poison ivy. Once you step into the water, run a net along the bottom, making sure to brush hard at any logs, submerged vegetation, and root systems. Pause to look in your net. Do you see any movement? Then dump all the items in your net into a water-filled bucket. Continue scooping until you have a thick mass of vegetation or animal life. On shore, slowly go through the bucket, scooping out creatures with spoons or plastic containers. Be very careful, they are delicate. Ready to ID some creatures? Well, let's go! Not everybody knows these creatures by heart, and the great way to identify them is using some of our online guides. There are ones from Georgia Adopted Stream, you've got one from Wisconsin, and Utah Extension Offices that give really good detailed information. On to our first macroinvertebrate, the gastropods. Gastropods, or snails like most of us know them as, are a really important part of the freshwater ecosystem in Florida. There are 113 species of, and subspecies of snails found in Florida rivers. And what makes them interesting is they help with the diversity, so the variety of life that can be found that can tell us how healthy the streams are. Another sensitive creature, the mayfly, you can tell it there because it's got three thin tails. It is a master of camouflage. That color, look at the color, is green, and that green blends in beautifully with all the foliage. Can you spot the mayfly? Look real, real close. He's tucked right there. Talking about masters of disguise, the glass shrimp or the grass shrimp are well known for their translucent bodies. What makes them so incredibly interesting is that they're only found in brackish water, well, 0.5 parts per million, salt up to 30 parts per million. So they're really more of an estuary, but you still can occasionally find them in ponds, especially if they're close to salt water. Once you've looked your fill, release the animals back into the wild so that we can use them as the base of our ecosystem. So why might we want to capture macroinvertebrates? Macroinvertebrates are key indicators of healthy water quality and the ecosystem. So since they're the basis, if they're healthy, the ecosystem is healthy. The next time you head out to your nearest stream, look to see if you can spot any mayflies, dragonflies, or damselflies laying their eggs.
Thanks, and I hope to see you again at our next adventure.